diagnosis of musculoskeletal disorders and injuries. Methods of obtaining data through the investigation. First, we need to investigate your history taking to see the symptoms. Second is the physical examination to see the sign. Third is the diagnostic imaging to see the imaging signs. And fourth is the laboratory investigation to see the body fluids components and biopsy. Important data we need to obtain are preliminary data, name, sex, date of birth, age, occupation, and family responsibilities. The present thing problems are chief complaint, common musculoskeletal symptoms or complaints such as pain, decrease in function, and physical appearance. Relevant past history, functional inquiry, social, economic, and work history, and family history. Physical examination. First, look through the inspection. Second, feel through palpation. Third, move to the assessment of joint motion. Fourth, is to listen from the auscultation. Fifth, is the spatial physical test. And lastly, is the neurological examination. Look, the patient must be sufficiently exposed. Observe the skin, redness, cyanosis, and pigmentation. Observe whether there are atrophy, hypertrophy, or scars, deformity, swelling, and lumps, limb shortening, or atrophy. You should always compare the opposite. We would like to see their walk. Feel warm hands, elicit less muscle spasm, skin temperature, pulse, tenderness, nature of swelling, characteristic of lump or mass, we can see it, consistency, fluctuation, size, relationship to adjacent structure, muscle bulk, abnormal relationship or wounds at their joints, or dislocation during movement and palpation to see the crepitus or muscle tone and NFD. Move. There are two parts that we need to see is the active movement and passive movement. Active movement may be limited by pain and associated muscle spasm, muscle weakness, Rupture muscle or tendon, joint stiffness, or joint contracture, or bony bone. In passive movement, we would like to see if there is an increase of movement or decrease of movement. Union of a healing fracture, detecting presence or absence of passive motion and pain at the fracture site by local angulatory or torsional force. For the listening part, we would like to hear fracture crepitus, joint crepitus, or snapping tendons. 
it is often loud enough but sometimes needs status quo. Special task. Specific signs and behavior could be tasked by the Thomas task and Trende Lindbergh task. For the Thomas task, we would like to see the hip flexion deformity, whereas the Trende Lindbergh task, we would like to see the ineffectual hip abduction mechanism. Other special tasks, such as the instability of the newborn hip, could be seen from the Barlow task and Ortolanis task. Sciatic nerve irritation could be seen from the Lasik test. Torn medial meniscus of the knees, we could see it from the McMurray test. Neurological examination. Many musculoskeletal disorders and injuries associated with neurological deficits, particularly important when there is muscle weakness or muscle spasticity, involuntary movement of muscle, symptoms of altered skin sensation, in coordination of movement, and also loss of balance. For the assessment of motor system, we would like to see the muscle tone, power, and coordination. For the assessment of sensory system, we would like to see touch, pain, temperature, position sense, and vibration. For the reflexes, we would like to see tendon reflex, abdominal reflexes, and also plantar reflex. And lastly is the rectal sphincter tone. Diagnostic imaging. There are ultrasonography imaging, CT, MRI, and scintigraphy. Conventional radiograph is still the most widely used. Plane or conventional radiography. In a sense, it's an extension of the physical examination. When we would like to assess the bone, which has higher atomic weight, there are more radiation absorbed. Therefore, the color will be opaque, whereas for the soft tissue, which has lower atomic weight, therefore less radiation absorbed, therefore the color will be more lucent. Abnormal increase in density is a sign of sclerosis, whereas the abnormal decrease in density is a sign of rare faction. Always see it from the two views, AP and lateral sometimes oblique, and also stereoscopic projections. Inspection of a radiograph. General density of the bone could be increased or decreased. Local density of the bone increased or decreased, relationship between bones which marks the dislocation and subluxation, break in bone continuity marks fracture, general contour of a bone marks a deformity, local contour of a bone internal or external irregularity, thickness of articular cartilage as reflected by the width of the joint space or cartilage space. Changes in soft tissue which could be a sign of swelling and atrophy. Contrast radiography, arthrography, and 
seen to sign of health, cavity to detect injuries or abnormality of articular cartilage, fibrocartilaginous menisci, capsule, and ligaments. Myelography is seen to subarachnoid space to detect protrusions of nucleus pulposus or soft tissue neoplasm extending into the vertebral canal. However, it is rarely performed with the advent of MRI. The scography that could see the intuitive intervertebral disc and also rarely performed with the advent of MRI. Sinography that could seek into external sinus to detect its source. Scintigraphic Bone seeking radionuclides. It reflects changes in blood flow and degree of local metabolic activity. It is useful for wide variety of lesions, benign osteoid osteoma, primary malignant tumor, skeletal metastasis, early osteomyelitis, infected endoprosthesis, stress fracture all of which appear as increased radionuclide uptake. However, for a vascular necrosis in early stage, it appears as decreased radionuclide uptake. Tomography Plain conventional tomography Images of a series of sections of the tissue at varying depth from the skin surface. However, it has been replaced to a large extent by CT and MRI. Computed tomography ingeniously overcomes many limitations of 2D radiograph. Actual coronal sagittal oblique can be seen. It is to detect the precise site and extent of varied disorders. Knowledge of cross-sectional anatomy is very essential to see the deformity in the bones. 3D reconstruction is also available now. And figure A shows a conventional radiograph of the hip joints of a 30-year-old woman with residual congenital subluxation of her left hip despite treatment for congenital dislocation in early childhood. Note the increased distance between the left femoral head and the medial wall of the acetabulum as you can see from the arrow compared with that of the right hip. In figure B, this is a CT scan of the hips of the same patient as seen in a patient A. Note the increased space between the left femoral head and the medial wall of the acetabulum as you can see from the arrow. C. It is a three-dimensional reconstruction of the hip joints of the same patient seen in A and B. Note the poor coverage of the lateral margin of the left femoral head by the acetabulum as shown by the air. Ultrasonography It doesn't use ionizing radiation. It is very useful to detect joint infusion, muscle and tendon injuries, precise relationship between unclassified cartilaginous femoral head and the acetabulum in newborn with PDH. Safe method for differentiating solid soft tissue lesion and fluid felt cystic lesions and Doppler to assess arterial and venous blood flow in an extremity. It is also helpful in assessing neonatal spine and spinal cord. Magnetic resonance imaging 
uses non-ionizing radiofrequency radiation, produces better brain and spinal cord image, and it is most effective diagnostic imaging for malignant tumors of soft tissue and bone, internal derangement of joints, especially the knee, rotator cuff tears in his shoulder, muscle and tendon injury, intervertebral dust herniation, and early stage of a vascular necrosis of bone. Various tissue of body have two relaxation times for a specific proton, T1 and T2 relaxation times. For T1 weighted, tissues with short T1 in example fat have high signal intensity that appears bright, whereas with long T1, such as cerebral, spinal, and synovial fluid, and tissues such as cortical bone and fibrous tissue have a low signal intensity that appears darker. In T2 weighted, tissue with a short T2, such as tendons and ligaments, have a low signal intensity, which appears dark, whereas fluid with long T2, such as cerebral, spinal, and synovial fluid, have a high intensity that appears bright. Laboratory Investigation Body Fluid and Tissues Hematology, Biochemistry, Immunology, Bacteriology, and Pathology And then most of most values are blood, serum, urine, cerebrospinal fluid, sinophyl fluid, abnormal fluid, and body tissue In diagnostic arthroscopy, it has increased the accuracy of diagnosis of internal derangement and other disorders to more than 95%. More readily accepted by patients, however, we need to be aware of abuse. Antenatal diagnosis has expanded dramatically that now there is a combination of a safe method of amniocentesis and highly specialized ultrasonography. Fetoscope is no longer needed. Useful for congenital abnormalities of the musculoskeletal system. Correlate of all the data that we already obtained from the examination that I already mentioned before, we need to correlate the logic, deduction, and previous experience. Firstly, we need to aggregation of groups of findings into patterns. Secondly, selection of a pivot or key findings based on the examination. The third, Generation of a cost list for pruning of the cost list, fair, and then the selection of the diagnosis. And six is to validate the, the, the diagnosis. To communicate this with your patient, we need to consider about the prognosis of the patient, level of patient's understanding. And also, we need to avoid medical jargons. We need to balance between the science and the art of communication because as we know that medicine is an art by practice that is also based on evidence-based medicine. <laughs>